Hello, my name is Jez I am the Associate Editor of JACI. We have a guest today, uh, Dr. Karina Da from Stanford University School of Medicine, Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. And Dr. Nada has published an article in JACI, which took uh, the interest of the community in the last uh, days. Uh, the article is about peanut oral immunotherapy, which results in increased antigen-induced regulatory T-cell function and hypermethylation of forked box protein 3. So uh, we have an interview about this article, and we would like to ask Dr. Neda uh, some questions uh, and how she sees the article. And uh, Kari, hi. Uh, what do you think the main impact of your study is? Yes, thank you so much. This is very exciting to be able to publish in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, and we're very excited about the potential impact of our study. First, let me say that there was a lot of research by many people in order for us to be able to find the results that we did, and it took a lot of work by patients and families to be able to do oral immunotherapy, which is an experimental therapy. And the impact, I think, here is that we found biomarkers at the DNA level and at the cell level that could potentially be used in a clinical setting to be able to map how someone does in clinical therapy. And that's very exciting for us as allergists and immunologists that we used the tools and the techniques that are available to us now to be able to look very deeply and very carefully at biomarkers that could be used in the future to help people understand how well they did with therapy for their food allergies. Thank you. What can we learn from this study uh, for patients? What are the messages for patients? I think the messages for patients and their families are that we have hope and promise that many research investigators are doing oral immunotherapy studies, and thanks to regulatory agencies and thanks to patients and families, we now are undergoing different forms of immunotherapy in the future. And I think what we can also learn is that in certain studies, after people get to a food serving of their food allergen, at about two years after they start therapy, some people are asked to go off their food allergen so that they can see whether or not they could potentially eat ad lib and not have to take the food every day for the rest of their life after a period of desensitization. And what we can learn for patients here that we showed, as well as some other people have showed in other research, is that it's potentially possible to stop the therapy, but that we need to find out who might be the best people to do that. But importantly is that it is possible and that food allergy is something that we're working on now to try to think about a therapy that lasts for a long time and that people can live without fear. Okay, uh, and uh, I see in the paper that there's a very exciting data, uh, which is a very major input uh, on epigenetic regulation, and this is a very major input on our understanding how uh, these uh, patients' uh, immune system is regulated. Can you talk about this data, please? Yes. We're very excited that at the molecular level, we could actually detect changes, and I think this also underpins uh, as researchers, as allergists, and as immunologists, that we use tools effectively in human immunology to be able to get at biomarker data. And it has to be drawn through mechanistic studies. And when we understand mechanism of disease and mechanism on the molecular level of how an immunotherapy works, we can not only get biomarkers like the epigenetic studies, but we can also get markers in terms of how to create new drugs using new targets for immunotherapy. The epigenetic work that we did is using a tool that is a sequence of a specific gene that we had thought about that could be important to be able to map out how well a patient is doing in therapy. And we just looked at one gene, although I think there are probably many genes and many cells that are being affected. This paper serves as a prototype by which you can look at detailed mechanism and be able to then find further biomarkers and further targets for how we can improve immunotherapy and how we can improve being able to look at signals in the body to predict how well a patient will do in therapy. Okay, as I understand, modifications at the DNA level of antigen-specific T cell subsets seems to be very predictive of a state of operationally defined clinical immune tolerance. Uh, 
So what are the next steps then, Kari, after this uh, good discovery? Yes, thank you for that question. We were very excited in Figure 4C to show that of the patients that had done well, that after three months of going off therapy and being still non-reactive after those three months, we could show that for the patients that did well versus the patients that still were reactive after three months of going off therapy, that you could predict that with some of these DNA changes that we could detect in their cells. And the cells were uniquely specific to the antigen, which I think is important here, that our findings show that it's specific. It's specific to the allergen that was used. It's not nonspecific. And so this says that the body has become uh, possibly non-allergic over time and that these effects are at the DNA level. And if they're at the DNA level, we number one, the next steps would be to see if they're sustained in these same individuals to see if these DNA changes um, can be repeated over time in the same cells. And if they're sustained, that would mean perhaps that the effect of the therapy will last a long time. So that's our next step. And then the next step, which is very hypothetical, but that if these changes are at the DNA level and that overall they're representing a good change for the immune system through this one uh, specific change in the DNA, perhaps that will get passed on to the next generation. And so those studies are being done now. We had both adults and pediatric patients in this uh, study so that we see these DNA effects for both age groups. And we're very excited about that. But the next steps are to, number one, look at sustainability. Number two, look at if this is passed on. And number three, most importantly, is this is a very small study. And so we need to do larger phase two randomized controlled studies with a larger sample size, more patients, uh, uh, so that we can understand how this affects more broadly uh, larger patient populations. I understand that these results are still experimental. And uh, do you have any comments on this? Yes, thank you for mentioning that, Chesme. It's wonderful to be able to have uh, published results in Jackie. And like many other uh, immunotherapy trials that are going out uh, in publications on food allergy, it's important to note that these are still experimental. All of immunotherapy trials in food allergy should be done in a hospital setting with trained individuals and should be done with the utmost of safety in mind. And there are many items that we are still working out in terms of dose and timing. So right now, this type of therapy is seen as experimental, but importantly is that there's hope and promise that we're moving forward in a good direction to be able to help patients and their families. Thank you. I would like to congratulate you, your group, Alena Syed, as the first author, and all your collaborators for this exciting study. And we look forward to the next steps. Thank you, Kari. Thank you.